Welcome back, guys. Kelly Link here, of course, joined by Anna Prosser Robertson, and we are joined by Nathan Stewart, the director for Dungeons and Dragons. How amazing is this for you? Because it's amazing from someone that's played D&D for over twenty years. This is phenomenal. This is so exciting. I think actually my favorite part is happening off camera with the energy of all the gamers like getting together and hanging out and talking D and D and doing stuff. Like I'm just sitting on the wall watching them going, "That sounds awesome. That sounds cool. You're funny as all." Like it, there's so much positive energy. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like watching the games is fun, mm -hmm. but all these people that we have doing this, we see them play. I mean, you guys, you play all the time. With them like you guys are all playing games. Everyone has seen all these folks play games before. Maybe not like in a cool format yeah. like this. Maybe not back to back. Maybe not for like 12 hours each day straight. <laughs> But, um, but you've seen the gaming and you know the energy and the fun and the stuff, but when you get really passionate, fun D&D &D fans all in a room and like just say, like, go play, it's, like they're kind of digging it. We, we've shown Studio C a few times now, but really being in there, it is a different, like, ambiance. I don't, it's, I don't, I can't explain it. Like you're saying, it is everyone that is in there. Oh, we see it right there right now. It's actually emptied That's out a little bit. That's pretty subdued right now. It is yeah, quite like, subdued. They're each all one in of those, food coma, they ate dinner, they're like, uh, A few hours ago, each one of those tables had like a one-off going on. Yeah. Everyone was just like, why don't we play some D&D? And on the right side, there's a bunch of swag. And it's like, I mean, I took like almost everything. It's like, you know, dice bags, dice. You have candy bars. You have brand new candy bars. Yeah, dude, they were dark they're chocolate. They're on brand. Salt. Delicious. I was like, mm. It is. Emmy Tanji, who's our uh, lead designer uh, on the graphics side, she does all the book covers and the graphic arts, she actually picked the, the flavor. Greg Tito said, Emmy, you're doing the packaging, you get to pick the flavor, and she's like, this is the one we're picking, people are going to love it. What's her name, Emmy? Emmy Tanji. Well, she's got a Thank new you. last name. Thank you. Thank you for that. It yes. was delicious. I know, right? Thank you, Emmy. Yeah. So, um, what are you guys most excited about today? What's been your favorite game? Now, you, you've played in a game or two, yeah, right? Yeah, I played in Dice Camera Action. I get to play tomorrow with Miss Clicks. So oh, nice. I yes. think that's what I'm really most excited for. This Not is our... DMing, though, playing. Playing. Okay. Yeah. No. What's it, your character? It's Yori Diggle, a halfling thief. Thank you very much. Very precocious. And we are doing it in the setting of Tomb of Annihilation, which, please, what do you think of Tomb of Annihilation from your personal standpoint? Jungles, dinosaurs, zombies. So dinosaurs. I've played through most of it. I've played okay. a lot of it. Oh. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's hard. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's really <laughs> hard. Uh, like that seems such a deterrence from fifth edition. Fifth edition seems very welcoming and opening. This is kind of dangerous. A bit more, but, ooh, deadly. Like, like, when you say hard, we can't. Re we weren't so long ago in Curse of Strahd. Like, is this harder than Curse of Strahd? Is it more intimidating than that? It's going to kill you in ways you don't expect. Oh, no. Curse of Strahd, you kind of knew you were going to die. That, you kind of knew what you were like. It was like, <laughs> oh, how am I going to die today? Right. This one, you're like, oh, I think I'm going to die. Oh. No, I was wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. Spikes from nowhere. Yeah, well, I don't want to give too much away about the adventure, but uh, I play a neutral, like a true neutral uh, rogue. and I have a true neutral rogue as well. And stuff was getting kind of stagnant. Nobody was doing anything. And we were in the jungle, and there were these flying monkeys, and, and I shot one. Yeah, it seemed like fun. a good idea. It was a bad idea. It was a <laughs> really bad idea. So, yeah, the whole thing, like everything about the adventure is really suspenseful and deadly and gives you this feeling of like familiarity, but at the same time surprises. So I think mm. that's even creepier. So it's deadly and it's fun, and I've played through a ton of it. And I think people are like really, really, really gonna love it. Can I, I wanna break in because you mentioned you've played through a lot of it. Being the director of Dungeons and Dragons, which by the way is one of the coolest titles I think anybody can hold. Yeah, it's is, kinda like my dream job, right? Right, yeah. I, it has to be. Well, my but, daughter, uh, she's almost four, and uh, what does daddy do for her? He does Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's so really, cute. really cute. Yeah, so. But being that that's your job and that you've played through this, I imagine that some days you come to work and you have to play Dungeons and Dragons. I have to. Right. Yeah, so yeah. No, tell me a little to. bit about that job and what it is you do and how, how what that's like. Because I think a lot of a lot of nerds out there like me are a lot of twelve year old Nathan's like, like how do I get that job? Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, well, so number one. You guys have seen Mike Merrill's and Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford and Chris Lindsay and, and all these people who are just truly talented and amazing people, like doing all this hard work. So first of all, I get to come to work every day with truly the most talented people in their kind of craft doing amazing things. Like when I said Amy Tanji, her covers and her inside the book and this it's amazing. Like it's so good, right? Everyone is the best, art, right? Like right? all of it. And Kate uh, does, you know, all the commissioning on the art and the layouts of it. And so like all these people are talented artists are really good. So I come to them every day. So I was A, feel inadequate because I'm kind of the <laughs> business guy and like I'm the boss, but I don't make any of it. I kind of just like help them, you know, not get roadblocked and stuff. And right. so I already kind of feel like a fraud. And then when you come in and especially like um, a press person or media person will be in. And so I 
have to play because I'm playing with someone who we're kind of sharing with and stuff. And I'm like, yes. And now today I get to basically play Dungeons and Dragons for three hours. And it's my job. So, yeah, so I I feel feel like I'm kind of cheating. Do you feel like you dislike it a little bit because you like, if you have to come to work and you have to play, oh, I have to play the campaign again? Or is it like every time you're like, yeah? I never get to play enough. I always want to play more. Um, I don't get to play that much at work, so it's not like, oh my god, I got to play. It's not like I'm testing. That's true. You know, like if you've met testers, like testers could probably get tired of video games, especially the one they're testing, because they have to play like the same level over and over and find all the stuff. And it's like person hitting the wall this way, not that way. Yeah, it's not enjoyable to keep doing the thing. But when you go through something and experience it like a fan, as a fan, and you're getting the exploration and stuff, like I get the same joy everyone else does on Mm. it. The difference is, you know, I get to do it six months early, or I get to do it I've at work. I've got that vibe from every one of you coming up here. He's like, I don't feel like I'm talking to an employee. You're just a fan that also gets to make decisions for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I, I enjoy it. As and someone that watches a lot of content online, it always makes me happy to know that the person that's making it is enjoying themselves. We love well. it. Everyone in Wizards is are gamers. They're all gamers. They might not all play Magic. They might not play, all play D&D. They're all gamers. Like, all of them... Like have closets full of board games, or they play have played D and D for years and years and Magic and stuff. But everyone's a gamer, and on the team, everyone loves what we're doing. And the biggest challenge on the fan stuff is sometimes we think of ourselves as the fans or as the consumers, and we don't buy anything, right? right. So, no, right. so our decision. So we're gonna. But so we have to remember, like, to make it. We want to make it great for the fans. But sometimes we forget and we think like we're the fans. Like, no, 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 we're not the fans. Like, I've been out of the target demographic for a little while now. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I'm not that kid. So we have to forget that we're fans when we're making decisions and listen to fans. Mm. But then, ultimately, because we do love the thing, like, we're always going to be close because it's like, no, we love Dungeons & Dragons, yeah. too. And so you guys might... aren't just trying to make money. You're trying to make this something even more amazing than it has been for the last 30 years. Yeah. You're just trying to make more of it. We're stewards of a 42-year-old brand that has meant so much to so many people, and we take that really seriously. And it really, Dungeons & Dragons probably is one of the only things that can compare that to, like, it has changed so many people's lives yeah. in a way that no other really nerd fandom has in my opinion. My parents met playing Dungeons and Dragons. Nice. If it wasn't for D&D, I wouldn't be alive. <laughs> so That's I, your I say I like that, that very nice. emotionally. Like, nice. Uh, okay, so just to make sure I'm hitting all these points. Uh, yeah, I'm, what else we got? We just talk about D&D. D&D you you lose time okay, right so. uh, Chris Perkins and Mike Merle, they have a talking points. You said you didn't want to spoil anything, but I think we have a video to highlight that. No, we no video anymore. <gasps> Never I think mind. we're mixing no the video, video because we're going. those guys are going to come on tomorrow and they're oh. going to like well, there you go. Yeah, if so, you guys want to know more so about it. So tune in it. tomorrow morning. Mike Merrill's Chris Perkins are definitely going to give like the highlights and the cool Ooh. stuff then. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you missed it this morning, Chris did a pretty good job, but he's going to yeah. do it again. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I'll be there. And then tomorrow also, you're playing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Girl Miss Scott Clicks. Story is playing first thing in the morning, mm-hmm. uh, DM'd by Matt Mercer. So it's going to be cool. It's that's gonna be awesome. Great. Who's your DM tomorrow? Naja. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then our international folks. So the Dragon Friends and uh, and Mark Holmes and the uh, and the High Rollers are playing tomorrow. Maze Arcana's got part two Ooh. because they're doing like the dueling. That was such de- a cool idea yeah. right? too, having the two yeah. teams going for the same object. That's such a unique way to make it competitive. Because D and D is always a team project, right? Yeah. It's never yeah. against each other. Yeah, I love it. so they're fun. And they're, so so they're, tomorrow's a pretty awesome day. I mean, today was great. I mean, my favorite was the look on everyone's face when uh, Chris Perkins ripped up the first character sheet. I and know. The, and they're just like, was, oh. It was a good rip, too. It yeah. resonated throughout the building. All right? Chris Perkins doesn't relish. do anything half-assed. Yeah, yeah. it was... I don't know, I, uh, the, the PAX C team that we saw, the Penny oh, Arcade yeah. C team, Jerry's evil laugh at the end. I was like, oh, I, like, I got like a little scared in here. Uh-huh. That was my favorite moment. Of have the you day. seen Jerry do his spoken word at the no, PAXs? I have not. Oh, you got to, it's, A, it's awesome. <gasps> B, you should do more. Jerry, you heard me. I, yes, I agree. I second it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes. It's so good. It's uh, so good. I got to talk to him after he did uh, the C team game today, and like he was like, the energy in here is awesome. I'm like, dude. You guys were great. Like it was so fun. Like it was like lean in, watch you guys. You were really good. But the energy was awesome, and uh, and he felt it. And everyone's been feeling it. And so I'm just really excited that like you know you guys are getting done with almost like a 12 hour shift right now. And you're like, no, let's go play some D and D. I know. Yeah. I actually I totally would if I yeah. had the chance. I wanted to ask you specifically because I was thinking about playing at the table and how it was a little bit different for uh, us dice camera action folks. We only had a few times to actually play with each other. Yeah. And that I remember, we have never actually sat around a table. We've done a live presentation. So at you did a the panel. TwitchCon one, but that yeah, was a panel. Yeah. But we were facing outward, yeah. and so for the first time, because usually I play and I look at a little webcam, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's my one point of focus, and I'll say, okay, I'm talking to Strix right now, or I'm talking to DF right now. But you don't. But this. Th- th- 
now I could turn to DF and say something to DF. And it was a very different experience. It was very cool. And, and you know, it just got me thinking about how I have always played D&D &D online, almost always. Oh, really? And, yeah, and I have streaming oh. and D&D &D are so synonymous to me. And I'm curious, from your perspective as the director of D&D, &D, here we are at the stream of Annihilation, and I've, I've overheard you saying a lot of things about how there's this, this streaming surge, almost. Yeah. What are your thoughts on where D&D &D is as an entertainment medium and, and on streams now? Well, so what I see streams as, so, I mean, we've got our virtual partners, you know, I mean, we've got digital partners, or we've got, uh, you know, Doug was just on talking about uh, Fantasy Grounds, we've got the Roll20 guys, and some other digital uh, players, or partners who help gaming groups get together when they can't be together, and I think that's an important part. Um, I think most of us, you might be the exception because you grew up or you started yeah. playing online, I think most of us would like, our first choice would be everyone's able to get the time, carve away four hours, ignore There's everyone. There's something special about yeah, everyone getting around the table. the table. It's like having Thanksgiving, but it's every weekend and you're up till like 2 a.m. yelling at each other. Exactly, and right? yelling. Um, so, so I think there's something special about that, but my favorite part about the streaming and how much excitement has gone on there is that it shows all the different kinds of D&D, &D, the different kinds of DMs. Like, there's totally different DMs. There's totally right. different styles and all stuff. And so the streaming, I think what it does is it actually goes from, hey, I've had my experience with one DM, and now I either like or don't like or love D&D &D based on the thing, to now I'm like, oh, that looks awesome. That looks, no, I'm not into that. Yeah. that looks, so I think the streaming part of it is just great to really show like this depth and variety and get you kind of excited probably to go play in your home game or play in your stream game because you're like, I want some of that. I want some mm -hmm. of what, they, mm -hmm. what they're doing, right? Like Absolutely. you see the friends and you're like, I'm in. Let's do it. Right. Yeah, so I like the streaming because I think it gets you excited to play more, excited to like how you can do your crazy build and your character because of something that someone inspired you to do or it just says, oh, Oh, I want to. I like that. I want to incorporate that in my game, or I want that to be my DM adding the thing because it really, like, it looks fun. So I think it just opens up your eyes to, you know, it's not just how many DMs you played with gives you experience. It's all the shows you could watch on the internet, which yeah. I think is a lot. Yeah, I think there's a lot of internet. I don't, I've heard that there are a lot of internet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a little bit of a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I. I mean, I, I keep saying that D and D is in, in a renaissance now. As someone that has been playing since the early '90s, that it's it's different. And do you feel that it's different? Like, if, is, do you feel that fifth edition is more widely received because of how the rules have been set out and played? It is, definitely seems more welcoming and more forgiving. Nope. Or is it because of this new renaissance of people streaming themselves playing it? Is that really the back of my head? Damn, I got both. <laughs> um, I think, so I answer this question a lot, and so I don't want it to be like a canned answer or whatnot, but I don't think there's always, I don't think there's ever really a simple answer uh, to many questions like this. So it's kind of a combination of all this of stuff, course. right? Like the, you know, all these kids with their phones all the time, me included, my wife, I mean, I say kids, but everyone on devices all the time. I think they crave human connection. D&D &D offers that. I think there's just an explosion of geek culture. I mean, we now get to actually run the world, so it's cool. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then fifth edition being like the right product at the right time, and this kind of trifecta has really taken us to a new height. I mean, we're a 40... We are a 43-year-old brand. Yeah. This is going to be our best year ever. That, and that's what I'm Last saying. year was our best year ever. That's right. The it, last year before that was our right? best year. Like it, the next year is the best year. So did it? Was it up for like second edition and like third edition, three like 3.5 Pathfinder, and then did it like stabilize? And that's like it. Like when did it stagnate? No, and you, when has it like? You had lots of like ups and downs. Ups and downs and ways because it's so culturally driven and what's going on in the thing. I remember when you know like right before you got into playing and right when I got into playing, like D and D was the devil. Rock and roll and D and D were the devil. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like, That's ah, so now I think video games are the devil, so it's cool. So D&D is like there off that go. list, right? right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. so whatever's going on in the culture like that has a thing on it. And then there was a, a kind of another thing where like, I guess before kind of the geek cool came back and stuff, it was kind of like you were trying to hide your geekdom in a way. Like if you were smart, it was almost like a bad thing. Like mm -hmm. contacts, you like everyone wore contacts, they didn't even like contacts, right? And they're like, oh, but I don't want to wear my glasses and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? There was this thing that, you know, so there's these cultural things I think that go through too. And then also, if you look at all of entertainment right now, I think people are really, really loving storytelling. You ready to play? So I'm talking too much. I think I think you're I talking. Think they're That's really, what Sam Antonell is yelling. At I think you they're really the table. like storytelling. But your thought, I really want to hear about that. Really that, like yeah. storytelling and really like these pl close personal human you're connections. Totally right with network. Like television is growing into these stories. Right, and so yeah. they they want it. You want world building. You want deep character. You want stuff. You want the stuff that D and D taught all the people to do. Oh, absolutely. And you're like, I get to be a part of that. I mean, you heard Joe talk about it earlier. Like, wait, I get to be a part of the story. I'm mm -hmm. in. 
Absolutely. Hey, Joe, I heard Mike Merrill's was going to kill your manicure. Ooh. The he looks disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that said, I suppose we should let them play. But... Yeah, I mean, there's, like, just right. throw it to the people. Give, oh, give the people what they want. thank you so much. It's oh, been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you guys for hosting. This has been Nathan. awesome. You guys are awesome. I'm so excited. Dude, thank you again so oh. much. And uh, on behalf of myself and Anna Prosser, guys, we're going to head down right now with uh, Mike Merrill's. Ooh, and Harper, give your mom an easy D &D. time. Go to bed easy. <laughs> Go to bed easy. <laughs>